Hey guys, welcome home, Wookie Legend here. Today we're going to be talking about the Stealth Torp Destroyer for you new players out there. Uh, what to do, what to expect, and kind of how to get into the whole feel of um, putting out Torps while not being detected and helping out your team with uh, capping and spotting and uh, pretty much contesting caps, right? You're, you're the guy that's going to be Putting yourself in front of your team uh, spotting for the most part um, you're going to be dumping torps and you're going to try to maintain uh, being not detected as long as possible so here we go uh, we're going to do a tier 5 um, because new players are going to be lower tier anyways uh, and if, learning at a lower tier is ideal I'd say um, quickly getting up to tier 10s you're not going to learn as much you're going to learn you're going to lose a lot of information by quickly getting up there so i, I never recommend grinding um the tiers really fast take your time uh try to go wide instead of tall right um here we have the minikaze now i have a 12 point captain um normally you probably wouldn't if you're new to the game but uh i highly recommend when you're starting out uh kind of just follow the guidelines of what wargaming is asking you to do before you know kind of what to do, uh, before you learn what you like and how you want to set up your DDs. Um, one huge recommendation is to have last stand on. So then when your engines are knocked out, you can still have uh, that mobility uh, so you can get yourself out of that situation and potentially not detected. Okay. Uh, eventually your 10 points are mostly going to look like um, pre preventive maintenance, last stand. Uh, I would highly recommend survivability expert just to get a little bit more xp you're not gonna get a lot but it does help okay and then concealment and and this is ideal these 10 points these three and this one for any stealth torp build uh for any dd in the game now not every dd is a stealth torp um some of them are quite exempt uh there's some that have no smoke there's some that go really fast with no smoke there's some that go slower with no smoke there's some that are mostly gunboats and not torp boats. Now they all have guns and make sure to always use your guns. Um, I see a lot of new players kind of stick to the whole, I'm just going to shoot my torps and not my guns, which um, is really bad habit. It's really good to actually use your guns more than the torps. When the torps are ready to go, go for it if you can. If not, if you're in a situation like a 1v1 against another DD, your torps are going to be the ones that are going to be killing him. Or, sorry, your guns are going to be the ones that are going to be killing him, not your torps. So I highly recommend you start using your guns more and more um, when you're in the match and you know you're going to be going right, right? Turn your guns to the left ahead of time because they are slower on the Japanese destroyers. Um, and, and today we're mostly going to be talking about Japanese destroyers because they're the best at stealth torping. Uh, there's a lot of hybrids out there, right? There's a lot of hybrids. Um, the US ships are usually hybrids. They're more of both worlds. Uh, they have the best smoke in the game. Um, then you have the Germans. They're uh, a shorter reload, tor uh, a sh shorter reload for torps with a shorter smoke, but they have like a quarter inch pen and they have hydro. Not all of them. Um, then there's like the Pan Asian destroyers where they have deep water torps, which means that you cannot torp other destroyers, only cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. Um, there's the the French, which they don't have smoke um, except for one or two premiums. Uh, but the rest of them are non-smoke, and they're focused mostly at shooting their guns and going fast. Um, then you have the Europeans. They're kind of like a mixture of hybrid in a way where they don't have smoke, but they have good detection. They have quick torps, but they don't do a lot of damage, right? So you have to always give a little and take a little. Okay? Uh, the Russians, gunboats mostly, uh, they do have heals later on, and they have uh, smokes. Um, their guns pack a pretty good punch uh but they but uh, their torps are four kilometers so very short range torps you have to kind of use them around islands and whatnot um the british they're a little bit of both also they have good firing short smoke but a lot of smoke they also have single firing torps so that's gonna be useful from time to time um what else is there i think uh i think that's it the french the pan asian the european ones British, German, Russian, US, and Japanese. Uh, if I missed anything, we'll catch it. This series right now 
is to start off with the stealth uh, torps uh, destroyer and uh, we'll go from there so when you're first starting out you're gonna see that your ship is usually naked uh, you want to go to exterior make sure when you go to camouflages to have one of the the first three so either a type one a type two or a type five which they're all the same now they recently just made them all the same make sure to use them they just all look different um, start using them up they will help uh, by having them on you're gonna get a minus three to detection which is ideal especially to be a stealth torque destroyer and then they're gonna be a plus four to the enemy's shots towards you so the dispersion will be a little bit more and the chance of them missing is a lot higher so make sure to have that on you can even put it on enabled and then auto resupply okay uh for signals i mean use what you can if you want you don't have to but there is bonus so i would prefer uh every dd player have at least a sierra mic which gives you speed i would have the juliet whiskey which gives you a better chance of flooding and i would always have the juliet uh, Charlie, which uh, prevents you from detonating. Now, I, of course, don't. And uh, there's a reason why I'm going to show you guys this video, because there's a lot of new players that don't have these flags. So we're just going to play it as if we're also new. Uh, for flags, it doesn't really matter. You can put whatever you want. Uh, most of these flags you guys aren't going to have. But eventually you might. Uh, this one in particular, probably not. Um, for reasons being that it's it's an eco flag. It gives you, it gives you stuff that... They kind of got rid of the from the game a long time ago. Anyway, nonetheless, if you go to equipment, you're going to be set up with you're going to be looking at something like this. Uh, and you're going to be looking at something like this um, for the first one. I don't really use the, the magazine modifier. It gives you another 70 percent chance not to get that needed. Um, I don't know how well it works. You don't have enough secondaries for this one, right? Or AA mounts for them to be alive if something's shooting you so i don't i wouldn't bother either so i would go with the main armament um it gives you enough bonuses that it's, it's worth having especially when it comes to your torpedoes right you see what it says there um for the second one um you want the engine protection so the chance of you getting your engine knocked out or or blown up knocked out mostly is a lot less okay and then for the third one, you're going to want the torpedo modification, which gives you more speed on your torpedoes. Uh, the faster the torps, the better. These ones are now 63, right? Their range is 7 kilometers, and uh, they hit for 10,800, which is huge at tier 5. Okay, uh, The torpedo range is 7, and I've got my concealment down to 5.4. Um, you're going to be obviously working on that, trying to get to 5.4. Um, when it comes to the modules, you can go with the other guns if you want. If you scroll over, it tells you what the positives and negatives are, right? You want the the hull, and I would always suggest going for the hull first because it gives you the most health. Um, and then the guns, if you would like, it all comes down to your own preference. But the hull should be always uh, first. Uh, from there, we uh, get to go into a battle. So we're going to be playing a random. Um, and we're going to pretty much go through the steps of what you should be looking out for. Um, when the game's starting, you're waiting like this. As soon as it starts, just start scrolling over um, what the enemy team has. Uh, on, in this tier, there's no radar ships. Uh, but what you need to mainly focus is what the destroyers are that you're going to be facing. And from there, you need to know, because you're playing them all, uh, if you have better concealment than they do. If you do, you have a bigger chance of surviving because you're going to spot them before they spot you. If you have to smoke, you'll smoke and just leave. And I'll show you guys what I mean by that, by leaving. Um, a lot of new players like to lay down smoke and then just sit there and either shoot their guns or just wait and torp. Um, smoke attracts a lot of torpedoes in this game. It, it always does. Um, so it's it's good to use your smoke only as a means to get out of combat, to, to avoid the enemy if possible. Or... Uh, help a teammate out so then they can leave the situation too if they know what's going on of course because um, a lot of the smoke detection penalties a lot of players don't know and when they're sitting in smoke they'll fire and then they'll get detected anyway and then the smoke is pretty much obsolete you know so use your smoke to contest to leave the situation 
Okay, but I'll, I'll show you what that what that is in a second. Okay, in front of us we have a Minikaze that's just like us, same detection, which is fine because we're going to be detecting them too. We have a Fabuki that's one tier higher, we have a Gade that's one tier higher, and we have a Nicholas. The Nicholas can outgun us, Minikaze, depending on the situation and how much health we have. Fabuki, uh, not going to outgun us, but it's almost a one-to-one, -one, and then the Gade is potentially going to outgun us. From there we want to look at, uh, obviously getting into the battle and starting, and not running into an island, this is ideal. From here, we want to go to D and contest D. We want to at least stop them from capping it. So we're just going to go forward full speed. From here, we're going to look at the cruisers. Um, we know that there's three of them. They can all damage us if they slot us. So we want to avoid them also. And then the battleships is not a problem. Um, they are going to be shooting at us. But as long as we're staying dark, we can go and take care of them with our torpedoes. Okay. And then we're looking at our team. We kind of know what they're having. It's almost identical, which is fine. At first, you want to put yourself in a position where you're going to spot for your team. That that doesn't mean rush to the, the cap and try. You could, but remember that they're also rushing to the cap. And because you're going forward and they're going forward, if you get spotted, it's really quick to then um, get shot at. So luckily, he's going to smoke up there and we know where he is. So that's one of the DDs. Now we have to pay attention to where the other one is. Now, when your team starts, their team kind of mimics what it's like a mirrored image. So you'll know kind of where their DDs are. Um, so the middle DD, he's either going to come to us here or he's going to go to a cap. We know where the Fubuki is and I highly recommend you guys make your maps bigger with the plus and minus so you can see. So there you go. We know where the Fubuki is and we know where the gate is at a we know where the Nicholas is. He's here. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to prevent him from coming in. What we want him to do is because he already wasted his smoke, he has no more smoke. So by us spotting him, we want to press F3, right? See? And now we're spotted two, just for a slight second. I'm going to pay attention to see what can shoot me. And if nothing can shoot me, I'm going to shoot back. And I want him to shoot first. I want him to get going on shooting so then when I smoke up, the rest of my team can see him. So, he left the cap, but look, the cap is still contested. That means there's someone over here behind behind the island. Now, Ara Hotnuk is kind of going to push them. Um, he shouldn't. That's the problem. And there's the Minikaze, by the way. So we found out where all four DDs are. We kind of knew that the Hotnik, uh, the Minikaze was here. And by him going forward, we, we're going to preemptively shoot our torps kind of ahead of where he could be. Remember, we're just sending it. If we get lucky, we get lucky. I still have not used my smoke. I'm not in danger, so I don't need to. So I'm going to open up. And hopefully get some uh, shots in. Now, we're going to smoke up because we just saw the Nicholas. He's coming in. So we're going to move forward. There, we're being fired at. From everyone, and that's okay. What we want to do is now avoid. Most, we're either going to get torps from the Minikaze or from the Nicholas. So we want to push away from the Nicholas. And if we have to leave the camp, we'll leave the camp. But always fire your guns. Yeah, my guns are going to kill him, not my torps. By the time I send them now, my guns would already kill him. Always use your guns. And then do a nice little well done or a thank you. So either F11 or F12. Um, oh, Try to learn your F keys. They're vital. If you hold down B, you're going to see them all. And if you don't want to press your F keys, you can just scroll over it and let go. Right? Um, you just let go. And then that's the, the one that will come out. So if you want something targeted, F3. And hopefully your team's paying attention. And see how it highlighted them? And it pinged them on the minimap. So everyone on the, uh, in the game can see them on my team. That doesn't mean everyone's going to shoot at them. But you're capping. You, you want a certain threat gone first. That's the threat. You always want to have the cruisers gone first. Because they can counter you. The battleships are okay. You'll deal with them later. Uh, DD's first actually, obviously. And then cruisers and then battleships. Uh, if possible in that order. If not... Go for the battleships first. If they're alone, go for it. Now, I did cap. Um, and I'm watching the minimap to see where everyone is. So I know I'm safe going forward. The Minikaze is dead. So I'm going to go forward and keep spotting. Because I'm going to go forward, I'm going to keep spotting. Oh, I know that there's more enemies around the bend. So what's going to happen is they're coming this way. I'm going to preemptively dump torps because I believe that they're going to be coming through this little gap. So by the time the torps get there, he's going to get there. And when I open up on him... He's not going to know that there's already torps. 
which is going to give me an opportunity for he either he gets torped or hit. Like, torped dead or hit in low health, and then I can gun him. Or at least he's going to crash because he's going to see the torps. But I'm giving myself the biggest advantage because this is a gunboat coming up. A German one. And there it goes. So I missed. He might have Hydra up, but I'm going to fire. And I'm going to say F3 because I need help. Yeah, see, he has Hydra up. Now he's going to fire at me. And my torps are already ready. So I'm going to just dump them again wide. Because I want to keep him away from me. I need him to be away from me. Now, he can see these torps. He has Hydra up. And look, I'm not stopping firing, and my team is helping me out. Now, I'm right in front of the enemy team, but I need to stay away from him because I knew he fired torps at me. There we go. I hit him with my second set of torps. And now I'm going to back up. And because I'm backing up nose to them, I have the smallest silhouette to them. See, they're still going to hit me. That's okay. My smoke is coming up. I'm trying to maintain. And because I have last stand, you see how I'm still moving at full speed almost? There's my smoke. I'm not firing. I'm going to stay dark. I'm staying dark. And they can't hit me anymore. I hit one of my friends with torpedoes. That is fine. Not the end of the world. I'm just going to back up. Right? And I'm going to just maintain this for a second. I'm going to get the healing or the repair. Right? I'm going to move forward because he's not moving right now. And I'm going to come back over here where I can contest him. Right? And I'm going to fire until I can go with torpedoes again. I'm going to try to get fires on him because we want him to burn. Now, see how he's slowing down? See if this is... He's slowing down because he wants to go forward because he knows I'm about to dump torps on him. Now, there I go. I'm spotted for a split second. That was a small little mistake, but that's okay. We keep going. Oh, he's going to beach here. So, most likely, we're going to hit him. He is within our torpedo range. And then we're going to turn back and start helping our uh, Anshan out. Because he's in a lot of trouble here. I'm gonna help out as much as we can. From here. Um, oh, he got so lucky. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? You never know. But we're still gonna help him out. That's way more important to us than him being uh, dead. Because we need our DDs alive. The DDs are the backbone of the game. And seeing as he just died, now about to lose my smoke. I'm going to head that way towards him. He's at 6.8. My detection's at 5.4. Um, something for you new players to do. Hold down control so you can see your mouse move. And click the little cog above the, the minimap. And turn these on. They'll give you indicators of everything you need to know in the game. Um, you'll see the little dotted line. That's my detection. I could just see that it's outside of him. So I don't have to remember that it's 5.4. It, it's something that it, over time you'll know. But for newer players, it's it's good to have a little indicator there. So then it's easier um, for you to kind of understand what you're dealing with. Uh, when you click it, also, uh, there's going to be... You can make it transparent, the map. Mine's pretty transparent because torps sometimes come through here. And it's good to be able to see them. Uh, the range uh, numerical now views is also good to have on. And ship name. Now, you're going to have to do this to every ship one time only. And then it's forever on. Um, rotate map I do not recommend ever putting on because every time you move your camera to a different view um, the map will rotate and you will lose your bearing on wh where to go you know, what to do now I missed my first volley and that's okay he's being fired upon which is fine and he's not paying attention so I'm going to actually open up and because I opened up I killed him he had no time to react because I came from a completely different position he thought I was here last right? because I was dark and now I'm going to go back and uh, help out as much as I can. The map is um, uh, the game is almost over, which is fine. But it comes down to not being very aggressive, but spotting for your team. Now, you can't control them from what they're going to do. So you don't know how aggressive they are. You don't know what positioning they're going to put themselves into. But you didn't know what you can do. You can spot for your team. You can keep them off the cap. And um, you can keep the enemy team busy by not allowing them to spot you, but shooting torps out and spotting for your team. Being spotted is the most important thing in this game because that's what's getting you shot at. So if you can understand how to keep yourself alive, and I'm not saying go completely by yourself. The whole point of this game is for, for it to be a team game, right? You want to spot for your team, you want to contest the caps, and then you want to cap. When you can't though, leave, but always leave towards your team. So if you're going to be coming out of your smoke, 
come out towards your team, not away from your team towards the enemy, because you don't have that smoke again. It's on cooldown, right? So always go towards your team. Uh, when you cap, <clears throat> when you're coming in, try to cap around the edge. Don't go toward the middle to spot more, right? Because you're going to be closer to them then, uh, and you're not going to have much support. They might have hydro, acoustic. They might have radar. You're closer to it by going towards the middle, right? Keep on your side and then leave towards your side and then go somewhere else. Um, I, I say a lot of newer players, they go through the middle and then they get caught on the enemy team where they could they, they usually get spotted and die, right? Um, and you want to stay alive as long as possible. Um, and always maintain your guns. Maintain your guns whenever you can torp, of course. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the basics, uh, the basis of being a stealth torp. Um, you are the most, um, uh, you are the best thing for your team, uh, when there's obviously no aircraft carriers, but even when there is aircraft carrier can only spot certain areas, you're spotting a bigger array of areas. Uh, if you're finding yourself with another DD and he smokes up, do not go into his smoke because it's just attracting torps that you don't know, right? Are there, um, if another DD does go in smoke, at least maintain spotting for your team. <clears throat> because with you both going smoke, or if you smoke up too, then you both lose the, the option to spot for your team. And then you don't know where torps are coming in. You don't know where DDs are coming in. You don't know if cruisers are coming around the corner or battleships. Um, and then you're, you're kind of stuck by yourself. Knowing when you're going into a camp, how to get out is also another thing that uh, is, uh, is something to learn. I always have a plan B because if it doesn't work out and most of the time it will not work out, right? You're not going to have the ideal you cap and you kill the guy and you have full health. It doesn't work that way. So just try to be a little bit patient. Read the mini map. That's very important. Learn your call signs, right? Uh, if you hold down F1, it'll give you actually all the information of the game. And um, you're going to find yourself quite successful because you're, you're focusing on the team. And not yourself. Um, know that uh, doing damage is more important than getting kills. If you're doing 90% of the damage, uh, and this is when you can, obviously, not all the time, but if you're doing 90% of the damage, you're going to be getting more experience and credits for it than getting the kill at 10%. Um, and your, your I ideal job is to spot for your team first, Contest the caps or capture the caps and then kill the DDs or have the DD spotted so then they're killed. And that's where you use your F3 to call out the DD that's closest to you, right? Um, yeah, I think that's about it. This is the first video of potentially four for the destroyers. I'm going to go through each class. Uh, the next one will be coming out in a few days. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, put them down below. I do read them all. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye from me.